Alright guys, today what we're going to talk about is how to put a canoe on a vehicle, a vehicle that does not have roof racks. And specifically, the vehicle is a car, and not only is it a car, but it, it's a sports sedan G35, an Infiniti, great looking car in its time, but uh, it's showing its age, it's a 2008, uh, but anyway, it still works for me. The problem is that the roof, front to back, even though it has a back seat, it's still a very short roof and it's kind of curved. So that creates a few challenges, but it's okay. But the other thing is that we have a particular system we use here, other people use it, but there are other ways to do it, even with foam blocks that you can attach your canoe to your car. So we'll explain those as we kind of go along. All right, so hopefully that will be useful for you and you can use it on your next trip. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with these attachments I have, hood attachments for the canoe on the front, all right? So these, you can do different things. These are, I just got these off of Amazon. I'll have the information below uh, in the description where you can check these out. Uh, they work quite well, so here's what they look like. So you just kind of lay it in there. Um, that one won't stay, well yeah, it kind of stays there, and that one will stay right in there for now. All right, we'll kind of move it as, much, as forward as we can in this case. So it's about there and about there. All right, so we'll put this down. Okay, that is stage one done. Now, we gotta put the canoe on the car. Now I can do it myself, it's not a problem, but I'm gonna get my wife to help me because uh, two people just make it a lot easier. If you do it yourself, you kinda shimmy up to the side of it and then you gotta kinda you know, scooch it along. It's fine, there's no problem with it, but it just it's awkward and it's just harder and uh, this will be much more seamless, all right? So let's go. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put this on top and it's going to be somewhere about there, okay? And as I said, you can do it. You can do it alone, but hey, that was a lot easier, right? So now, now we're going to go ahead and show you how we strap this thing down. Okay, so what you got to make sure is that your foam blocks are kind of in the right place. And in my case, I'm going to go kind of as far as I can from each other. But as I told you, this is, it's kind of a curved roof and, and it's not 100% ideal, all right? So, these are okay here, and these are okay there. Okay, that's about right, and it's about there. Okay, so we got the foam blocks positioned, and it's in the center of uh, the, the roof. Now, what we're gonna do is we gotta open up all our doors. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use two straps. I'll just show you what they are. It's a, it's a buckle, you know what, here. Here's a kind of a close up of what we're we got going on here. It's a, a buckle and what's gonna happen is this is gonna go right through here and then just pulls through the buckle and it won't go the other way, all right? So it's, it's meant specifically for tying down canoes or kayaks on the roof of a vehicle, right? So let's go ahead and rig this up. And so it just goes right through the back seat and you know, throw the other one in. Okay, now, whoa. Now what I'm gonna do, as I'm putting these through, I'm gonna twist it a few times. Because right along here, between the, the canoe and the door, if you don't twist it, if you just do this, 
that will make an awful, awful hum. It's, it's like a loud whining groan, and it's the first time I heard it, it just it actually scared me. I didn't know what in the world that is. It doesn't affect the performance or anything like that, but it's just, it's so loud that you quite literally cannot talk to someone in the car without this extremely distracting sound. So I'm gonna throw a few twists in there and I'll make sure that they're there when I'm uh, finished. I've kind of got these backwards the way I normally do them. It doesn't really matter. Um, either way you pull them, whether you pull it up or down, doesn't really matter. It will tighten very nicely. So let's see. Okay, so there's a bit of a twist. On the other side, there's even more of a twist. And now, so it still does move around a little bit. We'll tighten it just a little bit more. Okay. So, now, we're gonna tie down the front. So what I'm gonna do, I'm actually going to tie a clove hitch knot right here. And I'm gonna wrap it around the, the front carry handle a couple of times. And then I'm going to bring it down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a trucker's hitch or trucker's knot right here. And all you do is just a loop like this, tie it around itself, and there you go. So just a little loop. And what this does is it just gives you a lot more leverage when you're pulling. So I'm going to put the other end through this loop. Now. At this point, I'm just gonna stop and say that I prefer this method um, instead of another method that a lot of people use, which is a sort of a ratchet, a rope ratcheting system. And what that is, is it's just a block and you would connect it with uh, up here on the handle and then it just has two hooks. One would go down here and one would go on the other side. And you kind of just pull it tight that works great, actually, and I don't have a huge problem with that, but the, well, the only problem I have is that it's got a, a chunk on it where, where the ratcheting system has to work, and I don't like that wind resistance. It can kind of flop around maybe a little bit, so I just like old school here. So you can get that. You can get it on Amazon. Actually, maybe I'll throw a link to show you what I'm talking about, but in, in this case, I'm just using a rope, and it's a pretty small rope, so don't get, don't get a rope that's too big. All right, so here's the loop that I made, I go back through the loop, pull it tight this way, and then 
I would just do another clove hitch. There and then around this way. And there you go. All right, so this and then this, I'll just, the loose end, I'll just tie it just to, to get it out of the way. Um, the different ways you can do that, but that's fine. So right now, this is pretty tight. The only thing left is to do the back. So let's go take a look. Okay, so what I've done here, I've already got this rope, it's a little bit, little bit big, it's just a piece of rope I had lying around. I did the loop, all right, the trucker's knot. And so I happen to have down here a loop or a um, just sort of a, a loop down here that works just fine. I've been able to, to just put the, the rope through it. It's not centered exactly, but that's okay. So what I do now, pulling pretty tight, you go through that loop, again, the, the trucker's hitch. And so now you can pull and really, really, it just gives you a lot more leverage. And again, just a, a clove hitch. And that is about it. So guys, that is not really going anywhere. That, uh, by the way, these stick to the roof really, really well. They're meant to, all right? And I'll, I'll give you a link to where you can find those. These are pretty tight. Uh, you can tighten these as much as you want. The only other problem I'll just make you aware of is that if you pull too tight, you start to see your roof buckle, all right? Because it's not, it wasn't meant to have any sort of pressure on it at all. So that's why roof racks are kind of nice and you can put them on any vehicle, but this one, uh, we're, we're doing it without. So that's the only catch, but otherwise, if you, if you kind of come to the front here and see what's going on, this is where most of the pressure is going to happen. I can't move it from side to side very much. You can hear squeaking a little bit because if you look carefully, the gunnels are not like tightly attached to the blocks of foam. They're just there. You can see there's air space in there or whatever, but it's as tight as you really want. I know from experience. So this it moves a little tiny tiny bit but that's just kind of normal that'll that it won't even move in in wind in, in heavy wind so anyways guys that is kind of the gist of what we got going on here in terms of a canoe with four foam blocks um, on a slightly curved roof and so what you need the total of what you need is four foam blocks two tie downs. You can use whatever you want, but I would suggest these straps and they go right around into your car and then you just shut the doors after them. They're kind of in the way of your head a little bit, but you know, whatever. Deal with it while you're on the canoe trip, right? And then two ropes and the ropes are going to be about four to five feet long. Uh, you can go six feet if you want to. That might not be bad just to kind of be on the safe side. On the back, probably a little bit shorter. You can get away with about five feet on the front. That one's actually about six feet. Um, it could be a tiny bit longer, but that's just, uh, just, I mean, it depends on what your vehicle is, right? So this worked for the sedan and uh, that's about it. We're ready to go. Um, hey, I hope you guys have learned something and I hope you guys can use this on your next trip. All right, guys. So one other last thing that you might want to be aware of is the need for red flags. All right, you guys, you guys know what generally you put this in the back of your vehicle when you got something that sticks out. It happens to be that in most cases, three feet out from the back of your vehicle, if something sticks out farther than three feet, you need a red flag. I'm telling you right now, this is not sticking out more than three feet. All right, this is about two feet right now. However, I always like to be, you know, better safe than sorry. And ideally, I think you want to have it somewhere back here, but I haven't drilled any holes for anything. I'm going to just attach mine to right about here where it, the, uh, the carry handle is. And you can get all kinds of neat methods of doing this. I just have a copper wire and I just stick it around and twist it a few times. I don't really need to do it any more than that. Uh, I would probably make it, if I was going on a long trip right now, I'd make it tighter. So it would just stick tighter. All right, so it's kind of like 
there, something like that. And I would twist it and make it um, sort of permanent for the trip, all right? But right now, that's about it. And uh, so, guys, this is kind of, I'm going on a trip really soon, and so this is kind of what I'm, I'm, I've set up for. Uh, every vehicle is going to have a slightly different, you know, feel to it. You're going to have to have slightly longer or shorter ropes, and this scenario could be different. You could actually have in the back here or here, you can have uh, more of those trunk tie downs that I had at the front, all right, or the, the hood tie downs rather, and you can put them in the trunk. Um, there's different things you can do. I just happen to have a loop down there, so it works for me. Figure it out for your own vehicle, but that's the basic guts of it, all right? Guys, thanks for joining me. I hope that you guys can get use out of this. And remember, always get out there, enjoy God's creation, and keep looking up.